This video explains how to reproduce and fix the error message argument is of length zero in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In order to reproduce this error message, we first need to create a data object as you can see in line two of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object is appearing, which is called x1. And in the next step in line three, I'm printing this data object to the RStudio console. And then you can see that we have created a numeric data object, which contains not any elements yet. So if we want to apply an if condition to this data object, then we might try to apply the code that you can see in lines five to seven. So in these lines of code, I'm using the if statement and I'm checking if our values in X1 are larger than five. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that the error message error in if argument is of length zero is returned. And the reason for that is that within an if statement, we are not allowed to use an empty data object. So if we want to fix that, we have to specify a different data object for our if condition, as you can see in the next example, starting in line nine of the code. So in line nine of the code, I'm creating another data object, which is called X2. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 10 of the code. And then you can see that our data object contains the value 10. And now in the next step, I'm applying basically the same syntax to our second data object as I already did in the previous example. However, this time, if we run lines 12 to 14 of the code, a valid output is returned and no error message is shown anymore. And the reason for that is that our data object contained a value and was not empty. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.